Welcome back to the workshop. And we are starting to get there. I've been knocking off a few of the small items off the list. Things like mounting fire extinguishers, some tow hooks, even found a neat little spot for the jack underneath the spare wheel up the front. I think it's time though to have a look at the brake lines. So we'll be going with this uh, more conventional uh, hard line for the majority of the brake system to uh, hopefully improve pedal feel until we get out to the wheels where we'll be using some more of this flexible over braided stuff. I think the first thing we'll do is uh, create the junction between the two, the flexible and the hard line, and also a bulkhead fitting to get the hard line from the pedal box out of the cabin. To do that, I've got a bunch of these stainless steel uh, 3 8 by 24 inverted flare unions. As mentioned before, these fittings are stainless steel. And although shiny, I absolutely hate this stuff. Its only redeeming property is its corrosion resistance, which is why it's shiny. And unless you're looking for something with terrible heat transfer properties, I see no reason to use this anywhere on a race car. It has terrible fatigue life. It is impossible to cut. It warps its brains out when you weld it and it bluntens all your drills. But we're gonna use it for these brackets because these are already stainless and I don't wanna to have to paint the brackets. First thing we need to do is cut this out. We'll do that with the angle grinder because I don't wanna kill my bandsaw. And then we need to drill some holes in it. I should mention I've made this quite thick, thicker than I would normally uh, use for a bracket like this, but that is to stop uh, the, the warping when I weld it to the fittings. These are quite a hefty little fitting. There's quite a lot of material in there. If I was to weld a thin wall sort of uh, bracket to a thick unit like that out of stainless steel, yeah, uh, that wouldn't work very well. Probably the biggest issue with drilling or machining stainless is that it work hardens really easily. I think this is due to the low heat transfer coefficient of the material. The, uh, the heat from the cutting uh, doesn't dissipate quickly and so it concentrates in the one spot and work hardens. So the trick is to go slow, use plenty of um, cutting fluid, have a good sharp tool and make sure you're always taking a chip. Um, the last thing you want to do is have the tool rubbing on the surface, generating heat and work hardening. So I've got the drill set up pretty slow. Let's do this. No disasters yet, need to open up these two holes further. I've got a, I think it's a six mil drill and the drill is now at the lowest speed it will go, which is a hell of a lot slower than I would normally drill steel at with that size drill bit. That is not a happy drill. Bit of a touch up on the grinder, uh, let's see if that improves the situation. Up to 13 mil, we need to go to 14, so I'm going to carefully open it up with my step drill, hopefully without destroying it. I'm 
going to tap out these two holes to M5. Uh, no tricks here, just a pretty good quality tap set, lots of cutting fluid and plenty of hope. As tough as stainless is, it's no match for carbide. Unfortunately, the bulkhead is at, at a bit of an angle, so I need to oval out these holes to get this plate angled on the fittings. The biggest carbide end mill I've got is 12 millimeters. I've found this old high-speed steel end mill in the bottom of my drawer. It's the right size. Let's see if it lasts. Another overcomplicated welding jig has been created, all set up. Uh, time to weld, and whilst it does warp really badly, it is beautiful to weld. If you put the gas on. Disasters have been averted. That's come out quite nicely. I've also made up these two, which will go from the hard line to the front flexible lines. And these two, that will go through the rear bulkhead. Time to fit them to the car. So this fitting is designed to sit in the corner here. So I just need to drill and tap two holes. I've already drilled this hole down here, but I can't get the drill in straight, so I need to shorten this drill. Well, the drill bit, not the drill. Time to fit this one. It goes into this panel. This is not going to be much fun to drill. It was bad enough just marking it out and trying to center punch it. Well, there was a fair bit of drill misalignment going on there, but we got away with it. So last off, we have the fitting that will be the union between the hard line and the flexible line going to the front brake caliper. And it'll live somewhere about there. Unfortunately, the steering rack mount is right in the way of the drill. Uh, I can't get the drill in there to create some mounting holes and I've run out of little tricks I can pull off with the drill. There's just not enough space there. So I made up these little uh, stud plates and I'm just gonna weld that onto the back of the chassis rail to create the mount. So with all those brackets in and looking quite excellent, we can start running some brake line. We'll start with the trickiest, which is the rear. So we need to come out of that bulkhead, do a U-turn and come back down the center tunnel, back out the tunnel through this oval hole, which I cut out with my oval hole saw into a T-piece, which will position there or somewhere about. So to start off, we need a straight length of around about 1800 millimeters out of our coiled up brake line. To help straighten it, I bought myself a little tube straightener. This should result in a straight tube and uh, some questionable hand movements, I think. Time for the first flare. Tube nut on first, very important. 
to the depth. Clamp it up. This is a two-part process, so I'm gonna make sure we get, do it in the right order. Not bad. So here's a mock-up of what we need to do. This plate represents the uh, centre chassis section that we need to uh, go through. So we need a dog leg pretty much straight off this fitting down and inside the tube. I want the bend right up near the fitting so we're not going to be able to use the tube bender in the conventional way. So I'm going to try and complete all the bends based purely off measurements and not fitting it into the car because it's a real pain to fit. I've got the tube nut end we've already done clamped to one end of the bench. Once again, I'm not going to use the tube bender as intended. I've got the die out of my tube bender clamped to the bench and I'm just going to bend it around by hand. The tube's still running in the groove, uh, so I still get a nice uniform bend. This stuff bends really easily anyway, there's no real da danger of crimping it. Uh, and then we'll move the die to do the second bend. Once I do the clamp up tight enough. So I kind of broke my video camera. Whilst swinging that long length of brake pipe around, I whacked the viewfinder and everything went dark. But uh, after about 12 hours of microsurgery, I've got it back alive again. And a little bit has happened in that time. So we've pretty much finished all the hard brake lines. Uh, so the rear line comes up through this hole uh, then splits off on, an, on a T-piece here to uh, another T-piece with the brake pressure switch. And then we go to our two bulkhead fittings. The front's also finished, uh, but I'm waiting on another T-piece. So hopefully that will show up soon and I can show you the front all finished up. As is fairly obvious, I've removed the engine and given this whole area a bit of a tidy up. Uh, drilled a couple of extra holes in our little aluminium fittings here, one for the clutch hydraulic line and the other for the throttle cable. So it ends up as quite a nice neat bundle that goes up to the engine. I've also added this little bulkhead fitting and uh, this is for the wiring loom. So that's for the starter motor cable and that's for the rest of the engine loom. Probably wondering why I've gone to the trouble of creating all these bulkhead fittings rather than just passing everything out of the set of column there. A couple of reasons. Uh, basically, if everything came out the center here, it was just at the wrong trajectory and ends up going straight into the exhaust. And that's the main reason for, uh, for all this stuff. It's to get everything out of the way of the, of the exhaust uh, so I don't melt anything, particularly the wiring loom, which is why I've put it all the way over there. The other reason is doing it this way, it's a lot easier to get everything to seal up. This is obviously a firewall. I want to make sure everything's uh, properly sealed up. Now I've just got the two tubes for the uh, cooling system, and that will be quite easy to create a little plate over there and then seal up that whole section uh, to make a proper firewall. Oh, that bracket's also there to uh, 
um, hold the two main uh, engine coolant tubes and keep them in the right spot. A quick tour of the front brake lines. Uh, it's uh, quite difficult to get the camera in there, but you can see that little stainless steel bulkhead fitting we've made with the two brake lines coming through. Uh, one does a U-turn and goes up through the centre, and the other one does a U-turn back into that little T-junction and goes off to each side of the car. And while I was down here, I've also attached a little Anderson plug just in case we need to jumpstart the vehicle. So I think that'll have to do for the brakes. Uh, I know this video jumped around a fair bit and uh, as you can see, I'm all about continuity in my videos. Um, but yeah, when the video camera broke, I lost a lot of potential footage. Uh, to make up for it, before I sign off, uh, I'll take you around the car and show you a few things I've completed off camera. Up the front, we have a nice new aluminium floor plate, which uh, should help reduce the filth that enters the non-engine bay. And there you can also see the, what I think is a fairly neat little location for the jack. I made a lightweight version of the uh, bonnet restraint, and because uh, I'm all about symmetry, I added one on the other side as well. Not sure if I've shown these before, but I made some pretty sweet looking new side panels slash radiator mounts. Inside the cabin, I uh, finally got the aluminium to finish off the firewall on the inside. And out of the same gigantic sheet of aluminium, I managed to make the outside firewall panel as well. Ooh, I also welded in a little mount for the GoPro camera and that is specially located to ensure that the minute amount of rear view um, vision I had has been blocked by the camera. Also made this cover plate on the, in the passenger footwell that will house some very important items but that will have to wait for another video. Thanks for watching.